Hi, my name is Jesse Mwai. I'm a pastor with Crisis Answer Ministries. And for the past few episodes, we've just been having a conversation, which I think, you know, is, uh, is quite a big conversation because it may not be exhaustive in the things that we have said, but we've been talking about men. I am a man and I know that there are many men who are listening to me. And I also know that there are many ladies who are listening to me probably also trying to understand who men are. Because in our time, there seems to be some bit of crisis. Uh, we've been talking, so many forums have said and talked about the boy child, what is going on with the boy child, the boy child is neglected and what have you. But I think uh, for us, our most concern has been uh, when we look around and we look at men and uh, the news coming through our news outlets, you know, every day on a consistent basis, we find that men are becoming more and more violent. Young men, by the way, more and more violent, many turning to drugs and, and uh, the many who are disillusioned in life and committing suicide, depression and all manner of things seems to be bedeviling men. The problem is not education because uh, I think more than ever before, I think these opportunities for education are there and, and, and what have you, but there seems to be probably some other underlying issues. And we realize that for us to be able to appreciate who a man is and, and, and why we are here and why God made me a man or made you a man, we have to go back to him. We have to go back to the manufacturer so that we can understand the purpose for the product that he has created. And therefore, we've been looking at uh, the story of twins. And I think it's been very interesting to note that you can come from the same parents, same mother, same father, born on the same day, and yet be so different like day and night. And that is what Esau and Jacob were, totally different. But I think both of them, that story is there also to help us to understand that you can be either prone to be like Jacob, you know, the artistic guy, the ones who don't have a beard, like his brother, who are not hairy, the ones who uh, like to cook, like to work with their hands, or you can be Esau. That's not, the po that's not what defines us as men. There's something deeper, there's something bigger, there's a bigger purpose for you and I. And we look at a few things, we look at their personalities and we realize it's not personalities that makes us men. Uh, one personality is not better than the other. I can be the rough, tough guy, or I can be the gentle guy, the emotional guy. That's not what defines me as a man. Being a man is bigger than my physical features. I may have the hairy big guy, you know, tall guy, but I may also be the small guy who doesn't have the muscles and whatever. That doesn't make me a man. That's not what defines me as a man. But let's just take this conversation a little bit further. See, being a man is a daily learning experience. It is interesting that there are many of us who have not grown up maybe with a male figure or a male mentor. Um, and, and we sometimes grapple through life trying to understand what is it, what, what does it mean for me to be a man. We become husbands and even as I become a husband, I don't know how to behave as a husband. And then God blesses me with a child, but what does it mean to be a father? How can I be there, uh, you know, as a father, a good father to my children? And sometimes we grapple through life. And the thing about men is this, that men, unlike women we do not talk about our issues we do not share up we, we rarely have heart to heart talks you know with fellow men we somehow have this independent thing it's a man thing you know that i will grapple through life go through life by myself i will try to figure it out by myself but the problem with that is this we end up drowning in our own issues no outlet sometimes those issues put pressure on us no wonder you have so many men who are trying to turn into drugs. Some of them just walking away out of their families, out of their homes, out of their loved ones. Some of them taking a rope of you and taking medi medi you know, some poison somewhere and taking their own lives. It doesn't have to be so. Another twist in our time has been the whole advent of the uh, your gay movement and gay lifestyle. And, and so many men have also been swept uh, and I have encountered so many men, and my heart goes out to them, who have been swept into the whole gay movement, gay movement and trying to 
understand their own life. What is going on with me? What is going on with my body? What is going on with my mind? My passion seem to be to have changed and I seem to be drawn to other men and what have you. And my heart totally goes out to them. And we may not exactly really understand what happens uh, to men that sometimes we begin even getting attracted to other men. We may not understand everything, but we know this. And I can tell you this, and I say this with all the love and with all the due respect to those of us probably who are also struggling, that you can find help. That was not God's purpose, original purpose for you. You can find help. You can go back to the one who created you who fashioned you and fashioned your body. He made it in such a way, in a particular way, it was supposed to function in a certain way. And you do not have to find yourself being pushed in a certain way. Now we know that there are some who have been initiated into some of these things, into gazing, probably in high school or in primary school or in the neighborhood by other men, an older man who abused you. I tell you this, there is hope in Christ. And he can actually set you free. He can actually turn your life around. He can change you and you can be a productive man. You, 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 one day you can become a father, a husband, and a productive man in society. See, God has put in man a sense of leadership. Men are supposed to be in charge. Men are supposed to have significance. We are supposed to take charge of situations. Men are problem solvers. Men provide direction. That's what God made us to be. We are supposed to, uh, we are here for a purpose. We are supposed to have an impact, to do something significant in our time, in our generation. Yes, I may never become the, the president of this country. Granted, I may never probably be, be the leader of a big organization. But that does not mean that I cannot have an impact where he has placed me. God has made men to be loving. We are supposed to be protectors, to protect our loved ones. Not to abuse them with the very hands we are supposed to be protecting them with. We are supposed to be providers. We are supposed to go out there and, and, and labor and work for food and bring home the bacon. That's what men are supposed to do. Men are supposed to leave a legacy. Friends, we can go on and on. But I know that you're already, you're feeling me, if I can put it that way. And I know that that's the kind of man that you aspire to because that's what I want to aspire to be. I want that when my time comes for me to go, that my child will be thankful that she had a father in me. My wife will be thankful that she, she married me, she agreed to marry me. The people that I interact with, the church that I lead, the people I minister to will be happy that I was their pastor. The, my friends will be happy that I was their friend and I was a man while at it. I love them genuinely and I was an authentic man. You too can be that kind of a man. You have been watching Sitam Church online. My name is Jesse Mwai. Please get in touch with us. If you need help, if you need prayer, you can call us or you can even come to any of our churches here in Nairobi and even beyond in other cities. You can also catch us on Twitter. We are also on Instagram. We are on YouTube. You can get in touch with us. May the Lord bless you.